Sometimes the most outrageous lies can reveal our deepest desires. This man's plan is built on deceit, but somewhere amidst the chaos and cringe-worthy moments, could there be a chance for redemption? Prepare for a story that will make you laugh, question, and maybe even believe in the unexpected healing power of love. One of France's most eligible bachelors is Jocelyn, CEO of a major shoe company. What people don't know is that he constantly lies about everything to get women's attention, changing his stories as he goes and creating confusing anecdotes that still work because of his charm and money. Not only that, but he's also extremely misogynistic, thinking women are only good for one night, staring at their bodies instead of their faces when they talk, and touching waitresses inappropriately. The only person who knows his real self is his best friend and doctor, Max. Max wishes Jocelyn would stop lying but knows his pleas will go unheard. One day, Jocelyn gets a call with sad news. His mother, who he hasn't seen or spoken to in years, has passed away. On the day of the funeral, Jocelyn has the nerve to arrive late and even follows the wrong group before realizing his mistake and finding the right grave. His brother Lucien is already there, but their father hasn't come since he also divorced their mother years ago. After Jocelyn complains about the priest's speech being too long, showing no respect, Lucien gives him the keys to their mother's apartment, saying she would have wanted him to visit before it sold. The next day, Jocelyn goes to his mother's place and feels nostalgic as he looks at her old things and listens to her old cassettes while sitting in her wheelchair. Hearing his mother's favorite song inspires him to dance until he's suddenly interrupted by Julie, the new neighbor. She thinks Jocelyn lives there and is wheelchair-bound, offering to help him because she's a caretaker. Seeing how beautiful she is, Jocelyn decides to play along with the lie and even drops things on purpose, so she'll pick them up, giving him a chance to get a better look at her body. After they chat for a while, Julie leaves and Jocelyn sees Max for his regular checkup, since he needs to keep healthy, because he's training for a marathon. Max thinks pretending to be paraplegic to get a woman is insane, but Jocelyn thinks he's clever and will go ahead with it. The next day, after an important meeting at work, Jocelyn changes into what he considers disabled clothes, to look more pitiful, gets his mother's chair, and visits Julie to invite her to coffee at his mother's place. They chat for a while and while Jocelyn makes many mistakes in his story, like saying he doesn't work because he's disabled, he still charms Julie and she believes him. As she's about to leave, Jocelyn admits to being a company CEO and pretends he lied because he didn't want to be seen as just a rich businessman. This honesty impresses Julie and makes her invite him to lunch with her family on the weekend. When the day comes, Jocelyn parks far from the house to assemble the wheelchair under the curious eyes of a passing man, then he wheels himself to Julie's house. He meets all of her family, including her older sister Florence who, to Jocelyn's surprise, is actually wheelchair-bound. It turns out Julie isn't interested in Jocelyn. She's been checking him out as a potential date for her sister. After lunch, Jocelyn and Florence are left alone to get to know each other better. At first, Jocelyn is grumpy because he's not interested, but he warms up to Florence as she talks and shows how interesting she is. She works as a violinist, plays tennis in the disabled league, and has a great sense of humor. While their chat is fun, Jocelyn still prefers Julie, and tells Max so when they meet again. Max again reminds Jocelyn this is insane, but Jocelyn thinks he's clever enough to fake a disability in front of a disabled person and not get caught. Meanwhile, Julie visits the apartment again and finds Lucien, who is confused by Julie's description of Jocelyn, but plays along to avoid trouble with an innocent girl. The next time Jocelyn visits his mother's grave, Lucien approaches him and calls him out on his lie, saying Jocelyn dislikes his real self and lies to hide it. The next Monday, Jocelyn goes to work after a run and tells his secretary Marie she doesn't need to come to the office every time since he has an intercom. Afterward, he's surprised to find Florence has come to see him. Since he doesn't have his mother's wheelchair, he improvises by sitting on the desk. Florence assumes he prefers the desk to the chair because he doesn't want clients to pity him, which she understands. She explains she's come to apologize for her sister, who didn't realize she was trying to play matchmaker. Their conversation is interrupted by Marie, who tries to follow orders and not enter the office, creating a ridiculous situation. First, she makes funny gestures through the glass wall. Then she tries to get Jocelyn to leave the office to discuss a private matter. Jocelyn reminds her to use the intercom, resulting in Marie announcing through the speaker that Max has confirmed Jocelyn's colonoscopy appointment. Thankfully, Florence takes it with good humor. After Jocelyn hangs up, she invites him to watch her next tennis match for the tournament that his company refused to sponsor. Before leaving, she also points out that his ad campaign featuring a black man running is too cliché. Once she's gone, Jocelyn shocks everyone in the office by demanding an employee check out the disabled tournament for potential sponsorships, something he never cared about before. 
The day of the match arrives and Jocelyn decides to attend, giving him a new perspective. Florence is impressive on the field, and he realizes disabled people can play sports like anyone else. He's also surprised to see able-bodied people watching these matches. At the end of the match, he tries to leave without being seen, but Florence catches him, forcing Jocelyn to sit in the nearest wheelchair he can find. This turns out to be Florence's everyday chair, which she left in the hallway when she switched to her sports chair. Jocelyn first claims his own chair was stolen, then says his secretary left with the car and he forgot his chair inside. He promises to send the chair back to Florence later. Content with staying on her sports chair, Florence invites Jocelyn to have drinks with her and the other disabled athletes. At the bar, Jocelyn keeps asking inappropriate questions and looks annoyed when asked questions in return. When he gets home, he tries to listen to the classical music Florence likes, but still finds it boring. The next day, Marie brings the chair back to Florence with a sweet message from Jocelyn, who also asks Marie to lie and try to find out more about Florence. The plan works, and Marie is invited inside for a drink, giving her the chance to get to know Florence better and be impressed by her optimistic, philosophical outlook on life. When she gets back to the office, Marie gives Jocelyn Florence's concert schedule and informs him she changed his Prague meeting date to match Florence's performance. Marie doesn't like that Jocelyn is lying and urges him to go to Prague and tell Florence the truth. In Prague, after his meeting, Jocelyn gets ready for the concert and gets into trouble when he asks the hotel receptionist for a wheelchair. He doesn't speak the language, and his gestures are misinterpreted. In the end, he gets a shopping cart, which he drives all the way to the concert hall. Watching Florence play is a beautiful experience, though Jocelyn can't help but look at her body anyway. After the concert, Jocelyn approaches Florence to congratulate her, pretending he was in Prague for business, and discovering her concert was a coincidence. Seeing this as an opportunity, Florence invites Jocelyn to dinner instead of going out with her bandmates. The dinner is lovely, and they have lots of fun. Jocelyn is so happy he even sings along with the restaurant's band when they play his mother's favorite song. After dinner, Florence invites Jocelyn to her hotel room. While Jocelyn first accepts, on the way he starts feeling guilty and declines, claiming it's not right. Before leaving, he kisses Florence on the cheek. Back in Paris, Florence tells Julie what happened, making Julie think Jocelyn has a physical disability. Even if true, Florence doesn't care, because Jocelyn makes her laugh and feel like a whole woman again. Jocelyn continues his marathon training and attends an office party, where he confesses to a nervous Marie that he still hasn't told Florence the truth. The next time he listens to classical music, Jocelyn enjoys it much more, and he gets the courage to invite Florence to dinner at his house. He tells Max about this plan over dinner. After ignoring his friend's protests, Jocelyn asks how paraplegic people have sex. Max, expecting this question, has done some reading and shares his findings with Jocelyn. He still believes it won't work out. In the evening, Florence comes to Jocelyn's home and luckily doesn't mention that the house isn't designed for wheelchair use. Jocelyn tries to confess the truth a couple of times, but always chickens out at the last second. They dine on top of the swimming pool, thanks to the fancy electric lid that moves with a button press. Florence convinces Jocelyn to share how he became disabled. Inspired by Christopher Reeve, Jocelyn says he fell off a horse. In return, Florence admits she was in a car accident she caused. Afterward, she talks about an ex-boyfriend who betrayed her and how she hates lies. Once again, Jocelyn stops himself from telling the truth. Instead, he lowers the pool lid so they can be intimate underwater, allowing him to keep the lie going and still have fun. The next time Jocelyn sees Max, he admits that he might be falling in love with Florence. Max tells him he already is. To make things worse, Florence wants to meet Jocelyn's friends, so he invites Max and Marie to dinner with them, since they're the closest he has to real friends. Marie gets drunk quickly and tells a fake, nonsensical story about a disabled uncle. Max wants to tell Florence the truth, but when he's about to, Jocelyn spills soy sauce on him on purpose to get Max to take him to the bathroom. While they argue about whether it's the right time to confess, a friend of Florence's enters the bathroom forcing Jocelyn to pretend Max is helping him go to the toilet. Meanwhile, Lucien is on a date with Julie. The next day, Julie finds Jocelyn and slaps him. She knows the truth now, thanks to Lucien, who told her for Jocelyn's own good. Furious, Julie gives Jocelyn 48 hours to talk to Florence or she'll make his life miserable. Unsure what to do, Jocelyn visits his dad at the nursing home, where the old man ogles and flirts with the elderly women residents. When Jocelyn asks for advice, his dad suggests a plan, 
take Florence to the sanctuary of Our Lady of Lords and fake a miraculous healing. Jocelyn likes the idea and convinces Max to drive them there, even though Max still disapproves. Marie will come too. When Florence gets the invitation call, she accepts immediately. Julie worries that her sister shouldn't be seeing this guy anymore. To calm her, Florence admits Jocelyn probably wants to go to Lords to fake a miracle. She's always known he's not actually disabled. It's not something you can hide from someone who's lived like this for years. She never said anything because she enjoys happiness where she can find it. Who knows if she could ever find love elsewhere. This might be the best she'll ever get in her condition. When they arrive in Lords, they ask the locals about the miracle process, and a priest comes to take Jocelyn to the church for a private talk. The priest already knows Jocelyn isn't paraplegic because his shoes are worn out. He asks Jocelyn not to fake a miracle, as it would give thousands of believers false hope. Besides, if a miracle happened, the news would spread, and people who knew Jocelyn would recognize him in photos and expose the lie. Jocelyn leaves the church still in the wheelchair, and Florence is incredibly disappointed by his cowardice. She's so lost in thought that while crossing a street, she doesn't see an oncoming truck. Jocelyn saves her by finally walking in front of her. Jocelyn feels awkward, and Florence tries to help by calling it a miracle, but she still dumps him. She returns to the city with Max and Marie, leaving Jocelyn to hitchhike home. Back home, Jocelyn is changed by the experience. He tries to fix some of his habits. He leaves flowers with an apology on his mother's grave and changes his ad campaign to include a man in a wheelchair. He can't stop thinking about Florence, so one day, he speeds through the city until he reaches the outskirts and stops his car in front of the band's bus. He gets on the bus to apologize to Florence, saying sorry twice before leaving without waiting for a reply. Later, Jocelyn invites Marie into his office to check on her. She finally breaks down, confessing she feels unappreciated and disrespected after 12 years of work, and no one even remembers her birthday, which is today. In response, Jocelyn surprises her with a birthday gift as a sign he'll do better from now on. On the day of the marathon, Jocelyn discovers he hasn't trained enough and collapses in the middle of it. Surprisingly, Florence appears on the track, pretending it's a coincidence like he did in Prague, and offers to help. Now Jocelyn sits on Florence's lap as she guides her chair to the finish line, cheered on by everyone. As soon as they make it, they celebrate with a kiss.